Ladies and gentlemen, the recording I am about to present to you is the story of Lance Collins, a.k.a. John Todd. The name Collins was his Illuminati family name, and the Collins family is one of the 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati. The family name was later changed to the Todds to hide their family's secret past. From the age of five, he was trained to be a witch. At the age of 14, he was ordained as a priest in witchcraft, which gave him the title of a wizard. Later in life, he graduated to become a Grand Druid priest and was part of the Council of Thirteen, which is considered one of the highest tiers of the Illuminati. In the early 1970s, John Todd was saved by Jesus Christ and wanted to expose the Illuminati. He came into the Christian scene announcing that he was a former member of the Illuminati and involved in the occult. He made several appearances in audio tapes within the Christian community warning of the evil Illuminati plans. But they captured him and he was framed, imprisoned, and sent to a mental institution as an effort to discredit him. Several attempts were made on his life and as of today, no one knows for sure what became of John Todd. The following audio by John Todd was recorded in the 1970s and this is tape number two titled Witchcraft. Here is his story. Uh, last time I was here, I, I was sitting down there so I didn't see how many people were here in the second service that I was here. Uh, the last time I was here in the second service. is the young lady we prayed for after the service here. Uh, after the service, we prayed for a young lady about some problems. Since then, a few more things have happened around here. Uh, I don't know if the other young lady is here or not. I didn't pay attention when I came in. But uh, as I'm ministering today, I want to point out a very real thing. The witchcraft today argues that the power that they have is extrasensory perception. Many Christians are now believing in witchcraft under the disguise of scientific terms, ESP, clairvoyancy, telekinesis, and parapsychology, so on, because that's acceptable. The scientists say it's so, so that's acceptable. The only problem is today, and I want to point out through the Word of God, that it was still going on in Jesus' time, and Paul ran across the person of this power. We're going to discuss this in a few minutes in the 16th chapter of Acts. And when Paul was done with this person, he was done with her by casting demons out of her, she no longer had that power. So I have a question for you today. If you're having psych, uh, psychic experiences, or your parents had psychic experiences, I really invite you to get a hold of the pastor or his staff after this meeting is over, or over the next couple of weeks, I'm still putting very busy here, because I'm leaving as soon as the service is over for the East Coast. But talk to him about it, because when I was saved, I still contained all the psychic power that I had for two weeks, and I kept wondering what was going on. And my eyes still had kind of a look uh, at people that have been around witchcraft or been in witchcraft know the look I'm talking about. And my eyes still contained this look, and people in the church were wondering what was going on, although I was trying to live a Christian life very hard, wasn't really involved in sin, but I still had all this psychic phenomenon happening around me. I was still very bothered with the things that I'd come out of and addicted to them. Not drugs, but the psychic part. And finally the church decided if it was good enough for Paul, it was good enough for them. And uh, they took me off in a room and they prayed for me for about five hours. And they demanded that the spirits that I had allowed in myself through asking them to come in in witchcraft to leave. When I walked out of that room, I no longer had any psychic power whatsoever. So I don't care what Duke University or what the Inquirer or what the charismatic movement or what anybody else says about ESP or any psychic powers. You call the demons out, the psychic power stops. And witches have argued with me for five years over this. They said, Weren't, didn't you have your psychic power when you were born? Yes, because the Word of God says the sins of the parents are visited upon the children, and my parents were witches, and their parents were witches, and on down the line. And the witches that were born into witchcraft had that power. But now that they've gone evangelical, now that they're going out and winning people over who have never been in witchcraft, and their parents were not in witchcraft, they have to teach them how to gain psychic power. 
because they didn't inherit the spirits of their parents. But I want to read some scripture for you. I don't want you to go away mad here. Turn with me, if you will, to Galatians chapter 5. I'm sure all Christians are very familiar with the fruit of the Spirit, but we need to know about the fruit of the flesh also. Verse 19, Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft. If you have a Schofield or a modern version, it's wrong. In verse 20, it says sorcery. The word in the Greek is for witchcraft. Sorcery and witchcraft are different. Sorcery is the use of drugs. It is not witchcraft. In fact, the base word for it is the same word that pharmacists comes from. And it's the use, occult practice use of drugs to obtain supernatural powers. Witchcraft is different. Witchcraft is demonic worship. This is witchcraft. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seduction, heresies, envies, murders, it goes on. Witchcraft is a fruit of the flesh, the flesh ruled by the devil. Go with me, if you will, to Deuteronomy 18. If you want to mark these in your Bible, mark them. When you're witnessing to somebody who is involved, particularly I want to point out something today. I'm not so interested in, in hitting on witchcraft as much as I am on hitting practices that for some reason the Christian church today, the liberal churches, I'm sorry to say even some independent Baptists will come up to me and say, this is all right. It's in the Word of God. It's all right. It's in the Word of God, but it's not all right. We're going to go over it. If you want a list of what the occult is, it's found in Deuteronomy 18, starting with verse 10. And these are abominations unto the Lord. These are things that make the Lord so angry that in the Old Testament, he ordered a death sentence of stoning outside the city if you were caught doing these things just once. Not a dozen times, once. Now the reason for this was the Jews did not have what we call deliverance. They did not have the power to call demons out in the name of Jesus. They didn't have it yet. The blood hadn't been paid. So the power was not there to do this. Their answer was to take them outside the city and stone them to death. Because they knew that if you came in contact with a fortune teller, and you let a fortune teller tell your fortune, you obtained the same spirits from her that she had. They also knew that if you went to a medium and sat in a seance, you obtained the same spirits. If you went to an astrologer and had her do your chart, you received the same spirit. I want to give you an example. My foster mother, when she wrote a book, she said that over every chart that she did, astrology chart, she used to work for the LA Times and do the charts for them. She said over every personal chart that she did, she would light candles and demand that spirits from the underworld enter those charts so that when the person took the charts, they would be under her control. Okay, when she wrote her book, she did the same thing to her book, and she demanded that a demon enter every book that came off the press so that the person reading the book would be addicted to the world of the occult. And all writers on the occult do the same thing. All right? Now, let's read what the definitions of these are. Since we're reading the King James, I will stop and I will tell you. There's many repeats. Some of the words mean the same thing. There shall not be... How many of you have got Schofield? with you. Okay, you're going to be a little confused as we go along here. He changes them quite a bit. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass to the fire. That's not walking on coals. The old form of human sacrifice in the Old Testament done to Baal was to take your child and throw them into the flames to be burned alive as a sacrifice in the Baal. That's what it's talking about. Sacrifice. And a lot of it goes on. Or that uses divination. I'm, if you are going to be embarrassed about it, you don't have to do it. But if you'd like to be honest, it might help some of the others who aren't going to be honest. How many of you have ever had your fortune told, or even with playing cards as a joke at a party, or went to a fortune teller, or anything like this? How many of you have had it done? That's divination. Parapsychology calls it clairvoyancy. They like to change it a little. Okay? That's divination. That's fortune telling without the use of familiar spirits. Familiar spirits are spirit guides, the witches believe, have, are spirits of people who have died. We know from the word of God they're demonic spirits. 
that the angels that fell with Lucifer. This is without them. This is using so-called EFT. They're inside them talking. They're giving them the knowledge, and the cards have definitions to add to it. Most people think when a person turns a card over, that card has a definition. Most people will tell you that use the tarot cards or playing cards, which, by the way, were made to cast spells with and tell fortunes before Hoyle ever came around and invented poker. Okay? In fact, there are some witches who won't use the tarot cards because the playing cards are older and more powerful. But they usually get psychic pictures besides the definitions. There's much power to that, and that's why God said, no, you don't need it. You have my word, you don't need this thing. The next one is an observer of time. Anybody can shout it out real quick. What does it mean? Astrology. How many of you right now believe astrology is all right for a Christian? Raise your hand. How many of us have followed astrology? Now that means when the LA Times comes in, you just can't wait to open it up and look at it, okay? I do see the other sister around. She knows what I mean. She was addicted to it. All right. Is astrology addiction? It's addicting. She was hooked on it just the same as a heroin addict. She had to have a spirit cast out of her before she could stop reading it. She was that addicted to it. She went home and burned it all, right? That's when she got free and destroyed this stuff, okay? There's demons involved in this. People argue with me that astrology is all right because the wise men were astrologers. No, they were following a star that had appeared in heaven. They were astronomers, not astrologers. Okay? Astrologers say that the stars destined you, once you are born, you are going to stay that way. No matter what happens in your life, you can never change. The Word of God says that through the blood of Jesus Christ, you can change. That's why witches find it so hard to believe in the Christian faith because they don't understand it. There's no miracle change in their life. That's why when they meet me, they can't understand it. I've got a picture in my billfold that we found by accident going through some belongings of myself about uh, a year after I became a grand druid. I want to show it to the pastor later. I didn't even recognize myself. That's the difference and myself now and then. They don't understand the miracle change. It changes you physically, it changes you spiritually. But according to astrology, that's impossible. You stop becoming a Scorpio and a Taurus when you become a Christian. I find it very beautiful when somebody walks up to me and says, what sign you are? I said, the sign of the blood of Jesus. That's all you have to say. You're not a set personality. If that's so, then the Word of God is a lie because it says you're supposed to grow in the Word of God and have the fruit of the Spirit, and that's the only sign you should have, is Galatians 5. All right? Or an enchanter, that's a hypnotist. How many of you have been hypnotized? I've heard Christians going around now, Christian ministers, using hypnotists to minister to people. Don't believe it. It was outlawed in the time of God, and if it's called hypnotism now, and if it's called enchantment then, it's still the same thing. It's still the money car, and the Word of God says, uh uh Okay? Or a witch, I think that's self-explanatory. That's a person who casts spells on other people and controls them with their mind. Parapsychology calls it telekinesis. Whether it's making you do something with their mind or bending the fork for television's sake, it's still the same thing. A charmer, a charmer is style of a witch. It's a lesser degree. A consulter with familiar spirits. You'll find it on down in here. A uh, consulter with familiar spirits is a medium. That is somebody who asks the spirits to guide them. How many of you have used the Ouija board? That's a consulter of familiar spirits. How many of you have made the mistake of letting somebody, or you've done it yourself, swing the button over your hand to find out if you're going to have a boy or a girl? They laugh about it, but it goes on. It's so strange those babies always have the worst problems after they're born because they've done that. That's consulting with familiar spirits. That's what happened in the 16th chapter. Okay? Or a wizard. That's a male witch, not warlock, wizard. Or a necromancer. That's somebody who uses familiar spirits to tell the future, definitely like the Ouija board, okay? Consult our familiar spirits to be more like a medium, a necromancer would be the, somebody using the Ouija board to gain knowledge from demonic spirits, okay? For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. That's why he wiped out the land the Jews went in, so that wouldn't touch them, because that's what was going on. And all of the time the Jews dwelt in that land, they were surrounded by people who did this. Now the Christians are surrounded about it. Welcome to the club. Turn with me to the 16th chapter of Acts. 
If you run across the witch, I settle the whole thing. You run across somebody who's in the occult, whether they're witchcraft or not, and they want to argue with you that it's perfectly all right, it's ignorance to disagree with it, break open your Bible. Of course, witches don't believe in the Bible, so you won't get very far with them. But for the Christians who want to play games with you, who want to say this is right and that is right, and they were born with a power, they're a little ex, they're a little spatial, you know, this is the story. See, the same story that the devil used in the garden for Adam and Eve is the story that he's using the world with today that makes the occult grow. I'm going to make you a god. He can't even make himself a god. How's he going to make you a god? Remember what was going to make him a god? Knowledge. And the knowledge of the occult is spreading because people think that with it, they are more special than the person next to them. And that's why they become involved. Okay? 16, reading with me. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination. Divination? Fortune telling. Possessed with a spirit of fortune telling. So for those that like to turn cards and say it's EFT, you read them this. Met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. How many have heard of Jean Dixon? What did she call herself? A soothsayer. Where does she say she gets this from? God. That's blast came from a soothsaying. Looking into the future and prophesying. Satan's counterfeit of what the prophets of God did. Satan has never originated anything in his life. You can better believe it that if it's in the occult, the Christian church is either doing it today or they were doing it. And God has passed on to a new thing. But God did it once. The devil's not, he is not creating anything. He can only counterfeit. Most interesting, I'm glad that Jesus left us one sign that the whole world would know we were his. Because it's the one sign the devil can't imitate. He does not have anything inside him to counterfeit it. It's called love. That's why he has to have the death threat in the occult to keep it going. Then the same, the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. I've had hundreds of people come to me and tell me the Ouija board is correct, fortune tellers are all right, because they had just gotten saved, and a year before, some medium or the Ouija board or something told them that the Christian way was the right way. Most of the time, when I get to talking to them, I find out they never got or born again anyway. They just decided to switch over to being a Christian. The devil knows the blood of Jesus shed. He knows it's the right way. I've had mediums get up and interrupt the service and stand there and preach a message about how God was the most powerful God because the devil was not afraid of losing the person. I've had them come up and ask for deliverance and have the demons removed as a challenge because they did not want them removed. They were not going to leave because the people didn't want them out. And the devil was not afraid of having the person stand up and say it. But Paul left this person alone for several days. If you read it, she did this many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, not Mary, not Yahweh, no other name, not Diana or Kurnos, Jesus Christ. And it was said by a person who knew him personally, a personal relationship. In the name of Jesus Christ, it came out of her, and it came out the same hour. In some translations, it says the same moment. And when her master saw the hope of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Saul and drew them in the marketplace to the rulers. When it happened, when the demon was gone, their gains were gone because she couldn't tell fortune anymore. She didn't have that special little power that the other people went and paid her to tell about because it was gone. It was of the devil and it was gone. So when people come up to you and say that... This person set it on the field on if you saw, or Mike Douglas had somebody else on it, and so on and so on and so on. There was just a big controversy in the L.A. County area about legalizing fortune telling without a license and witchcraft and everything. The reason being was the great Crest, so-called great psyche, had told the L.A. Police Department that if they would do this, he would come and tell them who the strangler was. Sure, the devil will think on the devil. He doesn't care. So this was the deal. And they even sent a witch out from Ed Colvin to sit there and cast a spell over the city council or county council, whatever it was, as they were voting on this thing. She was waving her wand around and her incense in the air. But at the same time, there were Christians praying outside the building. And I don't know where the witch's minds were, 
When it was over, they told the newsman, they said, well, why didn't your cell work? And they said, all some dumb Christians were outside praying against us. Well, that's saying the Christians are stronger. We know that. I'm surprised they didn't have a revival in witchcraft right then and there. I mean, three Christians was all it was outside praying. They had about eight coven all through the area casting spells on the city council, and all the Christians were doing were pleading the blood of Jesus Christ over the councilmen, whether they were Christians or not. It's about time we stand up and start taking authority over the principalities and powers. Read Ephesians 6.12. That's what runs the area, and we need to take authority over it and stand up. Now, when I was here before, I talked on the Illuminati. I talked on the physical kingdom of the devil. But there is a spiritual kingdom, too. And without the spiritual kingdom, that physical kingdom wouldn't function. Now, I'm going to take a few, a few quick moments here. When we come back to questions and answers in the second session, ask anything you want, whether it be on the Illuminati or whatever. If I ain't got the answer, I won't be able to answer you. But I'll try. There's a book that we have worked we went down to Chick Publications for two days last week. Spent almost six hours just working the story out and researching in the Word and bringing out documents. It's going to be called The Angel of Light. It's going to be out in about six months. It's not going to pull any strength. Last time we had a little debate about Mormonism in here when I was in here the last time. We, Jack had the top experts on the Mormon church come in. They're going to hit the Mormon church. They're going to hit anything that has the devil in his earthly and spiritual kingdom in this book. Okay? How much time do we have, Pastor? Let's take questions and answers. Anybody have a question? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> they know, but uh, there's no use broadcasting it. It's in California, and it's about 55 miles from here. It's in the mountains. Yeah. We received them in courier pouches, usually carried by the U.S. State Department. Uh, the only time we received orders like that didn't come from the tribunal. <laughs> they came in Sabbath where Lucifer would appear. But usually he appears, remember, too many people got the devil spread out all over the place. He is one being. He's not God. He can only be. If Lucifer's standing here this very moment, he's nowhere else in the whole universe. So usually he sets, he's at the Rothschild house to give them orders, or he appears at what is called the Golden Don Coven. One thing I've got to add to you come up too much. We're bringing it out in the new book. How many of you read C.S. Lewis? How many of you read J.R.R. Tolkien? Burn them. I'm going to repeat this. Burn them. No, burn them. Burn them. Lewis was supposed to have been one to the Lord by Tolkien. Tolkien was supposed to be a Christian. The witches call all those books their Bible. They have to read them before they can be initiated. And it is well known in England and published in witchcraft books that they both belong to Rothschild's private coven. Tolkien's son is up for vote in three months to become the leader of the Illuminati. They're not Christian books. We have found books that are out, outside of the screw type letters that are on the gods where Tolkien talks of the gods Diana and Kurnos and others as being the real god. Well, not Tolkien, Lewis, C.S. Lewis, who's supposed to be a Christian, and those books are sold in Christian stores. Burn them. They're witchcraft books. Any questions yet? <laughs> oh, how many times has that question come up this week? Without TV, the Illuminati would never gain control of the world. There's symbols on the TV sets that are hypnotic symbols. You can talk to anybody that's a hypnotist, and they can tell you, why do you think that you can sit there and somebody can scream in your ear half the time and you don't know they're screaming at you? There are things that are burnt into your mind through the TV sets that are subtle, that are symbols and words and action. And we've talked with people that know of these things that go on, and they have confirmed this. Besides, two of the major networks in this country are completely Illuminati-owned, lock, stock, and barrel, ABC and CBS. And NBC is 90% Illuminati. And then most of the Christian television I don't watch because they receive large donations from them to tone the programs down. So uh, Jack Chick asked me what I thought about him going on TV on a regular series. I said he'd never get there. Try getting a serious Bible-believing program on TV that preaches hardcore gospel. It'll never happen. If you think Jerry Farwell is hardcore gospel, I have a little piece of news for you. No way. The girl that took my place as Grand Druid, Lavina, is a member of his church, and her parents are on his staff. No way. Yeah. Okay. I'll start off this way, because I can't completely hear him. I think I understand. I, okay. I didn't. I was going to answer a different question. Okay. UFOs, the inter occult teaches UFOs are angels of light 
to deceive the world into believing that we will later be invaded from outer space so that you can have a one world army looking that way. Considering they feel that one of these days they're going to be invaded from outer space. And they really believe they can defeat that invasion coming from outer space. Now how many of you know what invasion I'm talking about? They do too. And they really feel they can defeat it. That's the purpose. If you'll notice, all of the so-called landings and softer bases are in prime pyramid or cold areas such as the Bermuda Triangle, over the pyramid, over the, the gap in the North Pole, places like this. These are sacred pit openings to the occult. Okay? Any, any other? Yes. The warlock is Scotch Gaelic, meaning backslider or traitor. The Catholic Church applied it to the first Protestants. Okay? It never was applied to witchcraft. The Satanists used it for shock value in this country. The television's added to it. Witches, you see, witch is from the word Wicca, which is the name of their religion, which means wise one. And witch is the female version, and wizard is the male version. Wizard means wise one or teacher, and witch is wise one or leader. That's why the women are the leader, the men are the teacher. Okay? That's the term. Warlock is, uh, in fact, if you go to England, you won't even hear it. And that's where the stronger witchcraft is. It's just more or less used in this country, and the Satanists use it for shock value, because if you, if you go up and you say, I'm a wizard, nobody knows what you're talking about. Because if you wish, you go up and say, I'm a warlock, everybody knows, well, oh, he's something great, you know. So that's why they've used it, and that's how spread it. But warlock isn't a witch term. It actually was a term applied to the first Protestants in Scotland and Ireland. Any others? Yes. Go ahead. Oh, well, you're talking about, okay, she, she asked me an occult question. She asked if I know anything about the angel that was supposed to have given a princess in Ireland a Blarney Stone. This is Catholic and witchcraft teachings together. I'm sure it was a demon, okay? Uh, the princess was supposed to be the daughter of Bridget, which was the mother goddess in Ireland, which the Catholics made a saint. The Catholics, everywhere they went, they always turned the old gods into saints, so they keep the pagan following following them. Okay, a couple more real Yes. People believe there's two different worlds out there checking this world out because we've had violent contacts and we've had non-violent contacts. Well, you see, the teachings from the Necromonicon, which, by the way, I read scriptures in the Mormon Bible that are directly out of the Necromonicon. I'll have to turn this over to him real quick. All right. And the Necromonicon, it teaches, it starts, the first scripture in it is out of Genesis, and that's the witch's Bible, uh, the Necromonicon. It says that the sons of God came down and knew the daughters of Adam, and they were giants. All right? They teach that we were, when the human race first started, great wise ones from another world came here and started a race and intermated, and that's where the witches came from. Well, the Mormons, of course, teach that Adam came down with a wife and started everything. Where did he come from? So it's all still basing on this thing, and now they're believing they're coming back and checking up on us, and soon we'll have a government of world peace because they'll help do it all. <coughs> Thank you, Johnny. And remember again, Johnny Todd will be back uh, at 11.15. Our church service will be over at promptly 11.05 this morning, so we will give him full time. And uh, <coughs> the floor will be open for questions and for answers during that session. So we invite you to stay through the preaching service. Uh, just before we uh, dismiss you, we'll give you a break of about five minutes. I'd like to make uh, known these books. This is the book called The Broken Cross. How much is that? Thirty-nine for a dollar. Thirty-nine cents, three for a dollar. This is the story of uh, Manitou Springs, Colorado, about witchcraft in that town. A true story. Information provided by Johnny Todd. You'll want to get that and read it. And then secondly, there's another one just like this called The Gift. A very excellent booklet. You ought to have both of them. We have some books on on uh, masonry. The last time Johnny Todd was here, he mentioned the fact that the oath, uh, which is taken by the first degree mason, called the Entered Apprentice Mason, is exactly the same except for, I think, one phrase uh, with the oath taken by a person being initiated into witchcraft. And that oath, along with the oath of the second degree mason and the first and third degree mason, is also in this particular book, along with the uh, ritual and the initiation of the first three degrees of mason. First of the same. All right, this little book by Morgan, who was killed, by the way, for writing this book. The moment this book hit the press, he was kidnapped by Mason then and drowned in the East. Another book, this is a classic. Uh, this book, by the way, is only $1.50. Uh, this book is, is perhaps a classic. It was taken to the Supreme Court by Masonry, and they tried to pre prevent this book from being published. It's entitled Free Masonry Interpretation by M. L. Wagner. This book is only $4. Uh, it's been reproduced by Dr. Crane's Clandestine Press. I paid ten dollars for my copy. It's exactly the same book. Actually, it's a better, better edition. And this book you ought to have. There are just a few of these on sale in the back. 
Another excellent book by one of America's great evangelists of 150 years ago, Charles E. Finney, is entitled Freemasonry. He was what was called a bright mason. He was a Masonic attorney. He was saved by the grace of God by Christ out of Masonry and wrote this book exposing it. It's only $2, Freemasonry by Charles Finney. And then there are a few books back there, such as The Naked Capitalist by Scout, uh, Scousen, or Scousen, Scousen, I think it is. Uh, a book, just a couple of those, they're two dollars each worth having. A book entitled Textbooks on Trial by uh, Norma Gabler, who spoke here back in the early fall. Uh, she revealed what's taking place in the textbooks in the schools. Television was brought out. The schools were mentioned. Uh, people wonder why is the world moving toward world dictatorship? Why are freedoms being taken away? Uh, what's happening to our young people? Textbooks on Trial will tell you a lot about that. That book is a hardback. A book it is five dollars. But those books are all... Please. In the all right, before we take questions and answers, and the pastor will be up here monitoring until they get on the tape so everybody will know what the question is. I've had so many complaints, nobody knows what, what everybody's asking. So we'll do that in a minute. Please bear with me for a minute. You might want some pencil and paper for what's coming up. Uh, you can decide as you go. How many of you have read this? All right. As I repeat, nothing produced by Chick Publications is a book. It is a track. It is meant for souls. All right? Now... I'm trying to set up something where every student at this school will get one. How many are in junior high or high school in this school? All right, I want to see if you know what's going on. I talked with the principal. I talked with the pastor. I know what's going on in your school. I want to find out if there'll be a teenager honest enough to stand up and say they know it. How many know about the spiritualism group, the Ouija board group that is going on after school hours? How many teenagers have kind of been invited over to this thing or have gotten the word on it around the school that know what's going on? Any of you, have any of you been approached in the school about this? No? All right. If you are, please go to the principal. Please go to the pastor. Or there are teenagers who are fooling with this in the school and are trying to spread this. And we're going to, or the pastor and the principal are going to take care of it. I told them who I've spotted and know that's going around with this. Any questions? Yeah, go ahead. Tell, he's going to repeat it for the tape. The question is, <clears throat> what about Charles Manson? Was he demon possessed? Also about the book and everything. All right. Manson belongs to, uh, I had to belong to many brotherhood. okay? Manson, the brotherhood that he belonged to is called the process. The only brotherhood I worry about. They are so radical that in order to kill me, they would gladly give their own life up right in a meeting. They will run out of England for human sacrifice. They have the inner and the outer process. The outer process is a good group. They have free coffee houses, free clothing, free priests to live, and so on. The inner practice human sacrifice. They teach four God systems. Yahweh as the evil God. Lucifer as the good God. Jesus as one being punished because he spoke against Satan. And Satan as the earthly God. And uh, they wear a cross, big silver cross, with a serpent engraved on the cross showing that Satan and Christ are one through the cross. They were rolled up. They were a contract. He was paid to do it. Kate was breaking away. Her husband knew about it. Her husband went over to establish an alibi in Europe. The money came down. $50,000 came down from Toronto to New Orleans and poor Manson only got 2000 of it by the time it went through all the sticky fingers. But that's what the Tate killing were about. The others just happened to be there. She wanted out, and you don't get out unless you come through Christ. And she didn't think about trying that. And her mistake was she warned him in advance. She was arguing with her. She was having a baby, and she didn't want the baby raised up in it, and she wanted out. And if you remember the trial script from the book, that's the one thing she begged. She said, not, you know, she kept repeating over and over, don't kill me, don't kill my baby. Her baby was what she cared about. And that's the information that I have on it. I belong to the New Orleans branch, and he was called a field disciple or an evangelist from the New Orleans branch. The process. They were the people who first tried to kill me. The first incident that ever happened happened from them. They're very, very radical. They're located, and they've got a few scattered uh, undercover groups in L.A., but they've got an open chapter in Frisco. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. I can only give you the names of the, the question. Okay. Who are the names of the other people on the Council 13? Okay. I can only give you the ones that were honest, plus the girl who replaced me. There has been much assassination. There is a war going on in the occult right now between the traditional 
and the modernists. It's funny, we get to argue between traditionalists and modernists there, but the traditionalists and the modernists there, this is why I keep getting invitations to come back and join, because I was one of the traditionalist leaders, and they thought that I got out because the traditionalists were losing or something. They didn't start losing until I left. But this is why they want Fortune's son in. He is the leader of the tradition. But the, the leader of the Grand Council, as it stands about a week ago, is Gavin Frost. He's leader of the modern, the evangelical of the group, the ones who say everybody can be a witch. Uh, on it, the girl who took my place is Yvonne Collin, or Legina is her name. Now, many names I'll give you are witch names, okay, because I don't know their real names. That's the law in which if they don't choose to tell you, you can't ask. And even the council don't know the other council members' correct names from it. Jesse Bell, who lives in Florida, is a name Lady Sheba, Civil League. Dr. Raymond Buckland, who used to lead it, Lorca, is uh, still on the council. Uh, Louise Hugner from Los Angeles is on the council. Uh, Zorla from Chicago is on the council. I think the others that were on it at the time are up. Uh, Mrs. Morgan from New York uh, and uh, Lavina from France are still on the count. The others, I think, have either been killed or resigned or what, and others have been placed in their place. Yeah. The traditionalists believe... Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I keep forgetting. You clarify the distinction between the traditional and the modernist. The traditionalist witch believes you must be a hereditary witch, okay? That means you must be born into a family just before, a hereditary line. The modernists want everybody, particularly the Christians, most of all, to be witches, okay? Question, can you tell us about UFOs? Now, and my sister's connection, they, there's a story go, uh, that, that Jack Chick had told each person three years ago that I had told him. My sister, before my wife came around, used to be leader of the state of Ohio, the high priestess there, of the whole state. And her little pastime was calling up, supposedly filling the sky with UFOs and watching everybody's excitement. And some of the most outstanding sightings were in the early 70s in Ohio. And she used to laugh about it because she'd be standing in a circle out in the field somewhere calling up demons. And that's all they were, were angels of light playing games in the sky. Remember, a demon, get a little spooky picture. There are a fallen angel, an unclean spirit. They can assume any form or go into anything except a Christian who walks in the spirit all the time. Know any? You know, or in other words, a Christian who keeps it under the blood and so on. But they can they can assume forms, including spacemen or solid objects like flying saucers or so on. That's why when they appear on the radar scope and a jet gets up there, they vanish right in front of the pilot's eyes because they're nothing but a spirit. Tom Rose, can you say the word? Possession, obsession, and affliction, and then how it relates to the Christian. Well, let's, let's trade the words around a little. Possession, obsession, no, possession, oppression, obsession, and depression, okay? Let's use those for the, the affliction, okay? Possession means absolutely total ownership. You've seen one of the few, I've seen four or five cases in my whole life of possession, and the young lady that we prayed for at the end of the service was one of those that was possessed. I, that's how many in five years, and I have set in or been part of close to a thousand deliverances. You don't see very many cases of possession. Possession means that person doesn't breathe, eat, talk, say anything that the devil does not allow them to do that's inside of them. Maybe you've seen them if you've tried to get somebody to pray and they've actually wanted to pray the prayer of salvation, but they can't get it out. That's possession. Son of Sam, Possession. Uh, John Todd, five years ago. Possession. Um, Charles Manson. Possession. Let me explain. You know this Legion was possessed. The girl in the 16th chapter was possessed. You know what they did? They wanted help. You know what they did? They went and they challenged God. The most they could do was fall down before him and get the minister's attention. I'd been in meetings where they couldn't ask for deliverance because the, the spirit wouldn't let them. But they could create a commotion by resisting the devil. What they would do is they'd start thinking they wanted free and the devil would start manifesting and that would draw the attention of the minister to them. But most of possessed people are possessed not so much because the demons are possessing them, but they're possessing the demons. I mean, 
Most of the cases I meet that demonic activity do not want to give up the spirit. Remember how much you fought to give up particular spirits in your life. You just did not want to give. She did not want to turn them loose because she liked them. That may seem unusual to you, but it goes on. Think of the man who likes chasing women. He doesn't want to give up the demon of lust because he doesn't want to give up chasing the women. Okay? Now, oppression, possession is impossible for a Christian. Don't let anybody ever tell you that a Christian is possessed. That's an absolute lie of the devil. The next step is oppression. That is where the Christian can come. Oppression, uh, possession resides in the spirit or the heart of man. Oppression resides in the soul or the mind of man. Obsession resides in the flesh or the body of man. Okay? That would be the best way. Depression is outside. It's tormenting spirits from the outside. Unless it's a demon of depression. And then it's inside. But usually depression can be just you not depending enough upon the Lord so you're allowing the devil to depress you. I'm very funny. I don't allow any in between. I'm not a fence traveler. It's either God or it's the devil. There isn't any in between. And that's the Lord's own words. You're either with him or you're against him. Okay? That's the definitions of them. Will you use an example of how witchcraft and occultism are using advertising? <laughs> yeah. The Inquirer. <laughs> uh, I get Pentecostals and Charismatics upset because I call Catherine Kuhlman a witch. They want proof. The Inquirer, anybody who an article is done on faith healing or supernatural power in the Inquirer must appear in person before the Council of the Grand Druid. How many know about Kuhlman's article several years ago in the Inquirer? You don't get in there without top approval from the board. All right? That settles it right there. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know how, how you feel. Next, uh, you've got symbols, okay? Without going into a long sermon on symbols, witches and masons identify their ownership of things to the others by their symbols. Witches must do each eight things to perfect themselves. It's 6,000 years old. Two of them, one is drugs, one is alcohol, and one is immoral sex. That's three right there. Alright? Without even going on any further. That's one symbol. The symbols all over the thing. The holy year to the Illuminati is the birth date, May 1st, 1976. 76. Anybody recognize that on a sign somewhere? Another beautiful one is Montgomery Ward and Mobile are one company. Mobile belongs to a company that owns Standard Oil, Exxon, and all of them. It's one of the, it's probably 40% of the money that comes to the Illuminati comes to that system of company. So, naturally, those are going to be built up and protected more than others. And what can I tell you? I met a, a PR man recently who told me he is the public relations man for the new Star Wars sequel. He's a homosexual. He told me there's not one star that's a major star in the new movie that has not gone to bed with homosexuals in order to get the part. He also said the majority of them are being kicked from the top occult soap opera in the country. Does anybody have an idea of what that soap opera is? Young and Restless. Reason Brad, for those that watch it, is a Christian who cancels to astrology. And one of the new stars is Snapper, the doctor on the show, that will be in Star Wars. And the guy told me that instead of 45% of the Star Wars thing being on the Force, 99% will be about the Force. And for the guys who like country western music and think they're safe because uh, it's not rock, Tom T. Hall has just brought out the best-selling song in a long time. It's called The Force, about good witchcraft battling bad witchcraft. I think it's good enough. Within five square mile area of where I live is where they're dumping all the bodies. Louise Huebner lives in the same area. I don't know. I can't get any information. I can't get any information at all, so I don't know. You know, they're holding things back. I doubt it, but I will tell you what is involved. The same spirit that was in the Son of Sam. Okay? The same spirit that was in the trash bag killer who said he killed 34 young boys after raping them so he could become the top mass murderer in the world and break the record in Houston. These are demons that are going to come in in the next year 
you think this is something, where do you pick up the newspaper every day and this new killer is struck? You're going to have killers all over the place that are trying to break each other's records. Because you've got demons all over the top place trying to break each other's records. Okay? That's the best I can answer you. I don't know if it's a cult. It may be. But since there's no report of blood loss, I doubt it. He said last time I was here, I mentioned the, the uh, schedule that the Council of Rothschilds had for domination of the world that would be fulfilled within 11 years of 1972. And uh, he asked me if the faith, can I add that word? Faith, energy crisis had anything to do with it. What do you think started it? That's what's going to cause World War III. You've got to get out of the system of thinking this guy over here is a bad guy and this guy over here is a good guy. You can't do that. It's not a football game. You can't pick the Rams over the Vikings. You can't pick America over Russia. You can't pick the God over Bacon. You can't do it. You've got to look to the guy who's pulling the strings. His name is Rothschild. Okay? Remember now, the God's being called the man of peace right now. And if you don't think the President of the United States can do it, you better do some research. He can overnight by picking up the telephone. He can place us in martial law to suspend everything. He'll do it because uh, it's going to be the time. About the, oh, okay. All right. I agree with you. Get on our hands and knees right now and start praying. Yeah. I heard the same thing. They need some prayer. You know, I, some, some re I hate the way Christians pray today. Uh, now I lay me down to sleep type prayer, you know. Uh, five seconds and you've done your duty for the day. I don't know wh what it is. Uh, I guess it's my habit in the occult. I had to spend hours meditating and reading every day. So why can't I do it for the Lord? You know, I mean, the Christian church is wondering why the witches are walking all over them. Because the witch's prayer life is stronger than the Christian's prayer life. Way back here in the back. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he's smiling. <laughs> okay, I'll repeat all this. He'd like me to talk about Salem and the Inquisition, and also about the Masons and their contact with the occult. I would love to. I think we'll finish. That, that'll take the rest of the evening. Uh, for one, okay, how many have read history or were taught history on the Salem witchcraft in school? Sorry, I'm going to disappoint you. No witches were killed. Christians were. The witches did the execution. And if you want to spend a few thousand dollars in about a month like my wife and I did, go to the Essex Museum in Salem, and if you can, trick your way into the library like we did, which you're not supposed to be able to, and look at the original manuscripts, you'll find out that the Collinses and the Putlands and others that were there were involved in the witchcraft, and the main charge, which never comes out in any of our history books, was that the people that were executed were all from another town, they're holding Bible studies in their home, teaching born-again experience, and also discussing the book of Revelations, which was outlawed. But that didn't come out in our history book. But that was some of the main charges. The next thing that went on, the Inquisition, was none of the big witches were ever killed. Most of the people that were killed weren't witches. But the witches sure used it against us, just like Salem. Now, they know that in Salem no witches were killed, but they used it against Christians. They also know in the Inquisition that most of the witches did the executions there, but they used it against us. The bad point is that, and I, I want to give this to you in case this is ever thrown at you, they used John Wesley against us. Because before his salvation, he was a paid-for witch hunter in England who was responsible for thousands of people's deaths in England. But that was before his salvation, and they neglect to bring that up since they don't believe in salvation. Now, the good one, the Mason. <laughs> Four years now, I've been talking to Jack Chick that the Masons were initiated just like witchcraft people. And just, yeah, I guess it never really sunk through his head that it was, so I got the blackboard out the other day, and I drew him and told him, word for word, step for step, the initiation into witchcraft of the first level, when you join the Covenant for the first time. Okay? He told him, well, that's what the Masons do. That's what I've been trying to tell you. The power of secrecy. I had Masons deny that there was a knife pointed at them when they were led by the summoner to the challenger at the circle to be initiated. But the knife is there, just as it is in witchcraft. They are blindfolded, they are bound, just like in witchcraft. They are led by the summoner to the challenger to a circle with a star, five points in it. With the auditors, they're led through the gate 
at the same point and exits the circle at the other point and it's called and they're being reborn. The only three points that are different is we receive a new name to sprinkle baptism, a completely new name when we're initiated in the witchcraft. We drop our robes so that we're new when we walk in the circle and we'll re robe because we're born again in the circle. That's been changed now because of the modernists and they stay robed the whole time, just like the Masons. The other is our wrist is cut. But they're doing away with that in witchcraft now. So the only difference between it now and the Masons is the sprinkle baptism and given a new name. The initiation, word for word, from the time you walk up to the circle to the time you leave, action for action is the same as that that I took, my wife took, or anybody else took when he first joined witchcraft. It's what a Mason does when he joins. Now you tell me that the Masons are Christian. The Masons were formed as a Calvinistic organization going undercover to protect themselves from persecution of witchcraft when witches were being persecuted. And that's how they were formed, and that's their right. Alistair Crowley, which is some of you may know about, some of you may not, left the Golden Dawn, which is the private coven of the Rothschilds, and formed his own group. He, got, he didn't drop all the Illuminati, but he almost got himself killed because he published two books called The Order of the Golden Dawn. They didn't mind any of it, except he drew the temples of the Rothschilds' personal coven. He drew all the banners on the wall where the altar was set up, but the people were caught everything. And it just so happened there was a book out on Mormonism at the same time that had Masonism that had the very same picture in of a Mason temple. That's my statement on Masonry. Yes. Almost all of you are finance, double mind control, alpha mind control, a lot of the different leagues, the literary groups that are involved in it. Besides, meditation will lead you, if you go on into particularly yoga, to transcendental meditation or projection and other things. The problem with the meditation groups is they give you half truths in the beginning, just like in witchcraft, and then as you go deeper and deeper, all of a sudden there's things they did they told you they didn't do in the beginning that they're now teaching you if you stay with it far enough. And I personally believe that one of the best ways to fill yourself up with demons is to go into meditation groups. Okay, we're uh, we're running late. I'm listening. All right, we'll have Johnny Todd back again, the Lord willing. In about three months we want you to pray for him on his Eastern tour.